Peace family, it's good to be back. Let's get straight to work. Today we wanna to talk about American history. And no, I don't wanna talk about George Washington. I don't wish to talk about the Boston Tea Party. I don't wanna talk about the founding fathers and the writing of the constitution. I don't wish to speak about any of the sanitized version of American history. Today we wanna to talk about slavery, but more importantly, we want to talk about why it is that America makes it a point to write the slave revolts out of her history. Now, there is a baseball player by the name of Barry Bonds who ended up holding the home run record. Mr. Bonds ended his career with 762 home runs. But later in his career, it was found that he used steroids during a part of his career. So they put an asterisk by his name to basically say that, yeah, he got all of these home runs, but he cheated in the process. Well, when you look at the United States of America's power, when you look at her wealth and you look at the fact that she is the most powerful country on the earth, and you look at the fact that she used our ancestors free labor and her wealth was built on the backs of African people, then an asterisk can be put by America's name as well. Because just as Barry Bonds quote unquote is alleged to have cheated his way into 762 home runs, America cheated her way into her power through the use of slave labor. Now it is important that we teach our children that not every slave who was brought here to be hewers of water, excuse me, hewers of wood and drawers of water for white people cooperated. Systemic oppression must always be met with systemic resistance. Not only were there slave revolts, there were highly organized slave revolts. Some were nearly successful. Now, they love to write the slaves who refuse to be slaves out of history. But there's one that I would wish to talk about today that's called the German Coast Uprising. About 40 miles outside of New Orleans, you had what was called the Whitney Plantation. And on this plantation, there were several hundred slaves and it was an area that produced sugarcane. Anybody who knows anything about sugarcane, it was a very, very valuable commodity back in the 1700s and the 1800s. So in 1811, one of the largest slave rebell rebellions in the history of the United States of America took place. Over 500 slaves armed themselves and they ran up into the slave master's house. They hurt the slave master killed his son, stole his guns, or took his guns, took his weaponry, and they even took his militia uniforms, and many of them put on the uniforms. So as they marched toward New Orleans, other slaves from other plantations began to join in. And the chant that they shouted was freedom or death freedom or death. Now, there was a man by the name of Charles Deslandes, who was the leader of the slave revolt. Mr. Deslandes was a slave driver. He was a quote unquote mulatto slave driver. What does this mean? That means that he was a light skinned brother. And if he was a light skinned brother, it was because his father was more than likely a plantation owner. So they trusted Charles 
Deslandes with their slaves. He went out every day and he drove the slaves to meet those quotas for the plantation owner. But at night he was planning, he was plotting. He would organize by night and he would play the role of a slave driver by day. Mr. Deslandes was of Haitian descent. So my assumption is that his mother was a black Haitian woman, his father a plantation owner, if he were a mulatto. And this is one of the reasons that they quote unquote trusted him. And this is one of the reasons why they did not have a problem with him learning how to read. He was inspired by the Haitian revolution that took place only seven years prior. So he's on a plantation in Louisiana. Remember, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram back then. There was even no television. So through word of mouth, I'm sure, he heard about what the Haitians did to the French and what the Haitians did to Napoleon in Haiti, which was the most successful slave uprising in history, period, point blank. And so it was the inspiration of the Haitian revolution that got inside this brother. And what he did is he began to electrify other slaves who decided that they would take up the very things that the slave master gave them to use to cut sugar cane. They used them as weapons. So now they're at 500 and they're moving toward New Orleans. And they're killing any and everything that gets in their way. What happens? Well, since the plantation owners in Louisiana could not handle the slave revolt, they called in the federal troops. So the federal troops, which is the government, okay, faced off with the slaves. And when they realized that they were outgunned, they tried to make a maneuver and then when they turned around, the Louisiana militia, the white ones, met them. They killed several of our brothers and sisters on the spot. Others were captured and had to stand trial. And many of them were sentenced to death and set before firing squads. At the time of the clashing, some of them who were a part of the slave revolt were actually beheaded. And what they did is they took their heads and they spread the heads of these black brothers and sisters, our ancestors. They set their heads on display throughout the highway for a span of 60 miles. It takes you probably roughly an hour or so to drive for 60 miles. So imagine driving down the highway 60 miles until your left and your right. All you see along the way are heads of black people. They did that to send a message to the rest of the slaves that if you plan a revolt down here again, this is the fate that you will meet. Now, this slave revolt was so serious that had it been successful, it would have destabilized the institution of slavery and in Louisiana and throughout the South. So they had to be stopped. Why is it that this history is not one that's being told? Why is it that this is being erased? from our history. See, they don't mind teaching you about Uncle Tom's cabin. They don't mind teaching you about the docile slave. They don't mind teaching you about quote unquote, quote, and your mama and chicken George and those slaves who willingly submitted to the slave master. Every now and then they'll teach you about a Kunta Kente who was a runaway slave, which means this is something he tried to do by himself, but he was captured 
you know, they chopped off his limbs and we know the history of Kunta Kinte through the story of Roots. But they don't want our young people to be inspired by Charles Deslandes. Now remember, this man led a 500 person slave revolt based upon the inspiration that he got from Toussaint Overture and those who led the Haitian revolt. Well, if he could be inspired by those in Haiti, if his story is told, then maybe just maybe he could inspire somebody during this period of time in which we live. This is why they have to erase this from our history. But brothers and sisters, it is our duty that when we teach our people about our history of servitude, slavery, don't leave out the slaves who refused to be slaves. See, when you go on a quest for freedom in the year 1811 and you kill white folk in the process, you already know before you take that first step that there's a chance that you, you could be killed. But remember the chant, it was freedom or death, freedom or death. That means through this slave revolt, we will either be made free or we will die. So they actually had to make peace with the fact that they would die because they know that if the story of their revolt is told that generations would be inspired on into the future. This is why we got to tell the story, brothers and sisters. They have to erase all strong black men from the history because it is the European male's desire to be the only masculine figure in the minds of our children. And even strong black men like Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King, they try to sanitize and weaken their story, their narrative to us because they always want us to be afraid of them. So I want to encourage us to not be afraid to look up some of these rebellions that took place. Go and look up the Stono Rebellion of 1739. Teach your children about the New York City Conspiracy of 1741. Teach them about Gabriel's Conspiracy of 1800 and of course the Nat Turner Rebellion. We must always continue to tell those stories as well. They will always write the, the slaves that refuse to be slaves out of history because they want us to be slaves ourselves. So teach your children about these slave revolts because black children who only study white history can never create a future that our ancestors will be proud of. Peace.